I'm Steve Hay. Welcome to the wonderful world of woodworking. I've been asked to put together a series that covers all aspects of woodworking from hand tools through to machines, through to some power tools, techniques, joints, tips, tricks, whatever else you want to call it. But for this first one, I thought we'll go back to basics. Very, very simple things that get people unstuck at the very onset. This is one of the hardest things that people find to do, and that is cutting a straight line. All you need to cut a straight line is a few basic tools. First off, we'll need a square, 90 degrees, a marking knife, that's a general purpose knife. If you want, there's a proper marking knife. It's got a flat edge on one side and a blade on the other. You can use that, or just an ordinary knife like that's fine as well. A pencil if you wish. And one of the easiest and most useful jigs you can ever make in a workshop is a bench hook. Bit of plywood, bit of rubbish, doesn't matter what you've got, and then two straight edges. And as you can see there, that's just been glued on and screwed, and the same there. The idea with these are they slip over your bench like that and give you a fence to work on. So that's what we'll have, and a saw, of course. Now, there are many, many saws out there. The two main teeth you'll find is a cross-cut saw, which is what they call a flame cut, and a rip saw, which, as the name suggests, is a rip saw. That is a rip saw tooth, and this is a flame cut. The flame cut is used for cross-cutting, and I said before, the rip saw is for rip sawing. However, you can get a lot of good cross cuts out of rip saw. You can rip with a cross cut saw, but it's not as easy. So I'll do these cuts with the rip saw. The majority of saws out there are rip saws. Whether you're talking about a back saw or a tenon saw, uh, a gent saw, which is a basic dovetail saw, they are all rip saws. The other one, if you move into Japanese saws, you've got different teeth again. We'll cover that later. So the crosscut saw has its teeth sharpened at 60 degrees on each side of the tooth. And then when the teeth are set, that means separated, you actually get that razor point cutting the fibers and then cleaning out the swarf. Whereas with the rip saw, these teeth are filed at 90 degrees and they have what they call a chisel point, which knocks the fibre out. A flean cut will give you a much cleaner cut, but a rip saw will give you just as good a cut. Not quite as good in quality, but it'll do the job. So we'll use a rip saw. Normally I'd use a back saw. This is a back saw or a tenon saw but we'll do one with both. When I'm doing cross cut, I generally like about 12 TPI, which is 12 teeth to the inch. It gives me a reasonably clean cut. This back saw, I think, is about 14 TPI. So we'll have a look at the difference. Here's how you set up a cut. Put your square on the material, now you can use a pencil if you like, and you can cut to that pencil line. But something I've found that is a lot easier to cut and a lot easier to follow is actually, if you get your knife, we use a marking knife, you put it on the line and then you mark a cut. Now you've actually cut a line where you want to cut. Get a chisel run a score up on the waist side. If I wanted to keep this portion here, this would be the waist side. So what we'll do is I'll actually have this as a waist. 
and I'll run the chisel up on this side. Just like that. What that has given me is a lovely trench for the saw to sit in to start with and it's given me a fence on this side for the saw to run on. You'll notice a couple of things when I'm using this saw and I also have a plastic mat underneath because then when I finish cutting I don't score my bench and I don't ruin the blade. Keep your job hard against your bench hook and pretty close to the edge. Now I guess there are different ways to saw, this is how I do mine. I just start to run it very slowly on an angle and as I progress I drop the saw down. Now at this stage I'm at the back so I'm going to do a couple of cuts at the back. Now I'll just run straight. You'll notice with my hand the finger is pointing in the direction I want to cut. And keep it as even as you can. Try not to go down on one angle or at the back. And just keep the saw perpendicular to the ground. There's no point in rushing it. Take your time. When you're nearly through, you just let the weight of the saw do the work. So I'm not pushing with this, I'm just going to let the saw do the work. Just a light touch, that way you won't get broken fibres at the bottom. And if you look at that, that square that way, and we want to see if we square this way. Come a little bit out that way. See, it's a little bit on a slope. A lot of that was because I'm using a long blade, it's hard to keep it dead straight. So let's try it again this time, only using a back saw or a tenon saw. Same again. Mark it with a knife. Using a back saw. This is a lot stiffer along the back. Coming to the end of the cut, let the weight of the saw do the job. Check for square. Okay, nice and square that way. And we're a lot squarer that way. The reason is I've got a stronger back. With this one here that was a little bit wonky, we can true that up using a block plane and I'll talk about that in another episode. But just for now, the three things that stop people from being able to cut straight the three T's. Tools, technique and thought. Out of the three, believe it or not, thought is the most important. Someone once said, I think it was Napoleon Hill, he said, Whatever a man's mind can conceive and believe, he can achieve. If you're cutting, going, oh, I can't cut straight, oh, I can't cut straight, you will never cut straight. So believe you can cut straight, take your time, don't rush. The other thing is tools. Make sure your saw is nice and sharp. It really helps to have a sharp saw. And technique. If you use that technique I just shared with you then, I guarantee whether it's a six by four sheet of, uh, of plywood or just a piece of four inch timber or 100 mil, 90 mil, whatever that is, you'll be able to cut. And it doesn't matter what size or what shape. Once you get that technique, cutting 45s is a breeze. Or a drawer of 45. Do the knife.
work out which bit you want to keep. We'll keep this bit. So we'll run a chisel up here. Bit of ratty. Make sure you clear the corner. And away you go. Nearly through, there you go. Check that for square. So really there's nothing to it. First of all, believe you can do it. Get yourself a good saw, a sharp chisel, a knife of some variety, heap of scrap timber and practice. Guaranteed you'll be cutting straight lines in no time flat with crosscut sawing before, before the age of the drop saw or the band saw or any of those other things. This is what they used to have. It's called a saw box. This one's a Stanley and uh, I reckon it's got to be 70 or 80 years old. And for those, they used a big back saw that used to go in. Well, it does go in like that and you'd put your timber in, find out what angle it is you wanted to cut and you would just these are angles. They were great for repeating cuts and what have you but you can't get those anymore. The replacement to these uh, are, are much nicer and a lot lighter. Oh, and here we have it. Now, this one's made by Nobex, and it's more of a bow saw than a back saw. And this one, you can get different blades. The blade I have fitted to this one is a Japanese blade and that's the standard blade there and the Japanese teeth are much um, more aggressive, I guess you could say, but they give you a cleaner cut. Big difference with this, don't get confused when I say Japanese saw because this actually cuts on the push stroke whereas Japanese saws as a rule cut on the pull stroke but the design is like a silky saw, that type of tooth. All right, so with this, much the same thing. You can do whatever angle you like, or you can just, we'll just do a 90 degree and clean that edge up. 90 degree, start the saw. And there you go, that gives an absolutely gorgeous, silky finish to the cut. When you compare it to just a normal saw, it's much cleaner. But horses for courses. That's an alternative if you don't want to cut using hand saws. Till the next video, where we'll be covering rip saws and how to do rip cuts. I sincerely hope you enjoy your wonderful world of woodworking journey and I will see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.